My name is Tom Martin, and I'm one of the trainers here at TechScan. And today, this webinar is going to go over quantitative analysis. Quantitative analysis is basically taking an object and putting it over the pressure profile. Objects include show panes, at a box, at a polygon, and at a line. So what we do is we add these objects to the pressure profile and then get some kind of quantitative data that we can use. Um, basically, we can look at pressure, we can look at force, or we can look at contact area inside the object. First object we're going to look at is called show panes. So I'm going to click on the show panes icon. And every time you select an object, it's going to ask if you want to have a graph pop up as well. If you don't, you just deselect it and hit OK. Uh, since we're going to go over it, we're going to keep it highlighted, hit OK. And now we have two panes around each, each of the pressure profiles and a graph. So we have a green border around the left foot and a red border around the right foot. And you can see inside each box, or each uh, pressure profile, is a black box. And what that's showing us here is the peak pressure, the location of the peak pressure, and how much it is. So inside the left foot, the peak pressure is over the big toe, and it's 67 PSI. It also lets us know at what frame it happened in the, in the stance. Same thing with the right foot. Over the big toe, peak pressure is 75 PSI, and it happened at frame 334. So like I said, with uh, each of the objects, you can get a graph as well. So the default is for a force versus time graph to show up, and you can get each foot strike. So again, the right foot is represented by red, the left foot is represented by green. So here you can see this is the first right foot strike, and then the left right, left, so it goes back and forth. Um, as the subject's walking, you can look at the total forces as they're walking. With the panes button, you can also grab the border and click and drag. So now we can look at forefoot and rear foot. And when you do that, you can also get the peak pressure of the new pane, where it's located, and what frame it happened. So part, the peak pressure was in the heel, 48 PSI, happened at frame 231. And again, you can do it for the right foot as well. And we got the same information. Now you can see that the graphs change now. Instead of looking at just green and red, we now have green, red, blue, and purple to represent each, each foot and the segment that we put it in. Now you can subdivide it even further by just grabbing the end again. Push that up. So now we have three sections for each foot, the location of the peak pressures, and at what frame it happened. To close out of the panes, you can either click on close out of the graph or you can click in this box called Objects. You can highlight and delete. OK. OK, so the next object we're going to look at is called Add a Box, or Add Box. And with this one, instead of putting a pane over the whole foot, you can just segment it into an area of interest. So say I want to look at the heel. Again, I'll add a graph. And now I can just focus on just the information inside the left heel. So now the graph only focuses on this one box over the left heel. Now if I want to compare the right heel, you click Add Box. And now the graph selection, I can either create a new graph or I can compare it in graph one as well. Okay, so now what I'm looking at are both heels, left versus right, 
and you can look at the different forces between the two. Now to resize the box, you just click on the box and you'll get these nodes. So what you do is you can either grab one of the nodes and resize it, or you can pick up in between the nodes and move them. So I'm going to resize it to the shape I want. Make sure it's covering the whole heel. And same thing with the right foot. Just click on it. And if you want to resize it, you click on a node. And if you want to move it, just click in between the nodes. Okay. And again, shows you the peak location, the peak pressure, what it was, 48 PSI on the left heel, 39 on the right, and what frame it happened. Another way of uh, deleting objects is you can right click and click on delete. Again, right click and delete. <clears throat> Another thing with boxes is um, if you don't want to be stuck with the um, square or rectangle shape, you can click on add a polygon. Adding a polygon, you determine what the shape is. So I'm going to click here, create a new graph, and now I can determine the size and the shape. So we're not stuck with a square or rectangle anymore. We can determine what the shape is. We'll do the same thing with the right foot. We're going to go over the same area. And this time, instead of putting it in the same graph, I'll put it in a, a new graph. Hit OK. So now I have a separate graph. Graph 1 is for this, for the left foot. Graph 2 is on the right foot. If I also now want to compare the metatarsal head area with the heel, I can now click on that, and I'll do graph 2 since graph 2 is for the right foot. Now I can create a more rounder shape for the heel. We'll do the same thing for the left foot. We'll make sure we keep it in graph 1. Okay. So now we're comparing the heel and the metatarsal head area in the same graph for each foot. And again, if you want to get rid of an object, you can just close out of the graphs or right click and delete or go into what we call objects and delete. The final object that gives us quantitative data is called add a line. So I'm going to click on add line and I'm going to click and for the line I'm not going to create a graph because what we use this mostly for is as a measuring tool. So now I can measure the length of the foot and we can do the width as well. All right, so now we can measure length and width of the feet. Okay, so we're going to go back to this objects box, and I can add a label as well. So I'll highlight the line, and what I'll do is I'll click on change, and now I can add a label. Actually. Okay, so now there's a label. We'll do the same thing with this one. Change. Okay. And you can do that with all objects. So, if I add a box on the heel, make that bigger. Over. 
And then click on Objects, highlight the box, click on Change. Now I can put Hip. And what it'll do is it'll add the label to the screen. And when you print or um, basically just want to examine the area, you can just add these labels so you know that they're there. <clears throat> now what we've been looking at is, is peak pressure over the um, inside the objects. Um, but you can change these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Show Panes. And we will add a graph. So you can see what we have is we're looking at peak pressure inside the pressure profiles. But if I want to change these, I can go up here under Properties. And inside the boxes or panes or polygons, you can change what you're looking at. So instead of peak contact pressure, say I want to change this to force. So I'll click on force, hit set, and now instead of peak pressure, we're actually looking at force. So you can see the left foot generated for this foot strike about 231.9 pounds as they're walking. Same thing with the, uh, the right foot, it's about 237. And now the graph, the graph which is in force versus time and the pressure profiles, they're now reading the same information. So you can kind of see that. Um, we're in stance three. And the pressure, you can see, is registering between 200 and 250 in the graph. So the information is about the same. Okay, so if you want to change it again, you just click on the properties icon. And now you can change it to, say, contact area. And we'll set all. So now you can see that the, the left foot for the stance, the area is about 152.77 centimeters squared and about 153.55 centimeters squared for the right foot. <clears throat> now changing, you can also change the properties of the graph as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight the pressure profile. I'm going to change this back to peak contact pressure. And now what I can do is I can change the information in the graph by doing the same thing. I can either click on properties, or if you want, you can right click on the graph and click on Properties, and then change it. So what I can do is I can look at peak pressure instead of force. Hit OK. And now the graph change. You can see that instead of it being a force versus time graph with the very visible uh, heel strike and toe off, you now have peak pressure, and it's changed it so that what we're looking at is just the different peak pressures over time. And then again, you can change it to things like contact area as well. So I'll put it back to force. And again, with the graph, you can change it to force, contact area, contact pressure, peak pressure, peak contact pressure. And for the pressure profiles, force, contact area, contact pressure, peak force, peak contact pressure. And now with lines, we have it set up as default for distance, but you can also do pressure differences, and I'll demonstrate that. So I'm going to put a line, and I'm going to see what the pressure difference is between the second metatarsal head and the heel, the spot on the heel. So to change it, you just click on Properties and change it to Pressure Difference. So now it's telling us that this spot is about 22 PSI more than that spot right there. So that's showing us now the pressure difference. Okay. And again, if you want to set it back to Distance, just click on Properties, Line, and Distance. Okay, so that's about all we're going to show you with uh, 
the quantitative data analysis. If you have any other questions, you can certainly contact us by calling our 1-800 number or emailing us at marketing at techscan.com. Thank you.